I'm Ash Minnick, and this is Club Auspex. We have just seen Season 2, Episode 2 of New York by Night, and I have two of the players with me here. Super excited. I've got Nori Rahim and Michelle Wynn Bradley. Hey, y'all. Hey, Hello. Hello. Welcome to the club. This is your first time with us at Club Auspex. It is uh, very, you know, hip. It's very exclusive. I'll I tell know. you that right yeah. now. There's only two people here, three people. There's some people on the side you can't see off camera, but it's so exclusive. Tonight, <laughs> yeah, people on the guest list. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. And it's, it's y'all. Y'all are the guests. <laughs> so welcome. You're, you're welcome. For, yeah. So fancy. So fancy. So hi. Hi. So uh, in this show, we sort of delve into the unseen, speak with the players behind the game, and, and you know, kind of get into your head a bit, um, just like, you know, Auspex. That's, that's the... I, oh, I get it. You get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> so let's start with the obvious. Uh, welcome, you know, to the show. It's so great to see you both here. Thank um, you. Nora, you were on LA by night. Very different character. Also came in as an NPC initially. Yeah. And Michelle, this is your first time with the official uh, stream. Yeah. So how has it been for y'all to be at the table? <sighs> this has been such a fun coterie uh like the interactions between everybody has been phenomenal i think it started in our text thread before the show even started <laughs> i think we had our uh with the vibe was there yeah. Mm -hmm. um but yeah so different from eve's character i think like night and day and I, I i that was a choice i made i wanted to make her as different from eve as i possibly could yeah yeah and uh i from what I know about LA by night, I was really excited to join all these wonderful people that I know kind of already, or I'm getting to know better now. Um, and the acting on that show was just phenomenal. So I was really excited to be asked to join. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, I've played in lots of other uh, RPG shows, but um, you know, vampires is very special. And uh, I played one other show with uh, the vampire system uh, called Denver by night. It was on Q Times. Uh, back in 2020? Yeah, we were on that together. That's right. Oh my God, you were there for the finale. A little sorry. Side, sidebar. <laughs> sidebar. <laughs> um, and I had such an amazing time. It was sort of my first dip into like, anything like horror or gothic, anything like that. Um, since then, I've done a lot more. And uh, this has been a really great experience. Like everyone is such uh, phenomenal uh, improvers, actors, um, writing their own backstories to be you know, as as interesting as they can be. It's been, I mean, everyone's like sort of writing their own piece of the story. And of course, Jason is leading us, but uh, it's been really interesting seeing yeah. the reveals of not only the main story, but like little bits and pieces of the characters that I'm discovering along with uh, the rest of the cast. It's really interesting. Yeah, it is really fun. It's very, you know, um, there's definitely a consistent tone with everything Jason runs, but it's so mm -hmm. interesting to see where the story goes based on who's at the table. Um, just like, so y'all are a, a Ventru and a Toreador. Yeah. Yes. In LA by Night, we had a Ventru and a Toreador, but they were very different. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm super interested in how y'all sort of, uh, what you pulled out from the clan, like what, what you wanted to bring out from your clans and how you kind of found that character. Oh. <laughs> no. um, Ventru goes first. Okay. Uh, I have, other than, than uh, Victor Temple, I have seen a few other examples of ventures being played. Uh, and everyone I've seen is different. And I wanted to portray it close, as close to the like, tenets of what makes a venture a venture, you know, an opportunist, a uh, leader. Um, but being a fledgling venture has been very different from being an established venture. Um, so, the things that the te the chronicle tenets the um, the things that we have to abide by I think in my character it takes very seriously and so there's been a lot of you know like if if chaos ensues I think Kalita will very much try to be the one to like put fires out yeah she's definitely done that a lot with this coterie as yeah. opposed to our little fire starter <laughs> right here. Oh, rip. Um, <laughs> so this is my first time playing a toy door in any capacity. I've seen some amazing examples. Obviously, Cynthia Murray did a great job, um, Nellie Bay Knight. 
And, you know, upon reading the material, um, I really wanted to define something. They're obsessed with the beauty, right? So for me, if it's not obvious by now, it, it's going to get weirder. Um, I'm obsessed with the human figure as opposed to art, music, sort of the classic things that are portrayed. Um, and so I really wanted to show that in a way, because that, that added to the creepiness for me. Um, it's it's a little weird to, for any human to be obsessed with other humans parts. Um, so I kind of took that and uh, also I wanted to explore with my character that uh, nature versus nurture a little bit. So from my background, which has not been revealed at all yet, it's yelling again in here, um, versus when I got turned, what things did the blood do to me, to my pers to my human personality that got uh, sort of enlarged, that got uh, made, you know, sort of grotesque? So uh, my backstory, so good, just can't tell you. Um, it has little things in it that uh, this grew from. The reason I'm obsessed with the human body is, uh, will be revealed soon, but it's sort of like, I didn't want to just be like, I used to like art, and now I like art a lot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, and I wanted to explore like how, like, what am I, you know, like, is it, am I what I was when I was a human or am I, you know, what the blood has made me? So it's sort of that just happening. I thought it was very interesting the way, like, you see Tory doors and they, they, you know, they stereotype as like, oh, they love beautiful things. But the way you portray how you, how you find something beautiful is so interesting. Aww. Like, it took me a while to, to get like, oh, she's a Tory door. And that's why she's like, oh, your hair, yeah. oh, your face. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a very interesting character choice. I've found it very fascinating watching you. Oh, portray it in a very unique way. So you can't share your backstory, but is there something you can't, in fact, there's something both of y'all can share. There's been a lot of um, fronting, I wanna say, in this sure. game, you yeah. know? A lot of everyone's kind of keeping things close to their chest, mm -hmm. especially with these two characters. Yeah. So what, what can you share with us? Uh, something really easy for me is because if you Google what Kiam means with the little little hat and little accents I do on it. Um, <laughs> the hat. Uh, Kiam is Vietnamese for sword. So I've got a lot of sword stuff happening in my outfit. I've got, you know, the earring. Um, I, uh, I try to say too much. Um, so that is sort of, uh, you know, my hidden meaning of my character. It's just, it's right there. It's not that hidden. Um, it's just in a different language. Um, other things with my character that I can reveal? Let's see. I... That's like the biggest thing, I feel like, because mm -hmm. people wouldn't know to like Google that. Yeah, I guess. that's like a little <laughs> knowledge, a little bit of Yeah, knowledge. so it's like I'm a, I'm a fighter, and I think that, um, you know, obviously in this past episode, like, we did some fighting, but I didn't, um, I used a dagger, and it wasn't like super, I didn't like go straight for a weapon right away, and I think I'm trying to really hard to not show that immediately. Just get a little stab. Oops. A little, little, little bit. Not little, my fault. Little yeah. <laughs> Wait, you, you knew she'd heal. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I love that line. I knew she'd heal. What? <laughs> uh, I had a similar thing where I wanted to give my character's name an interesting, uh, you know, interesting one, something that had meaning. And so I chose Kalida because it well, in Arabic it's Khalida, but I didn't want it to be like a thing. So Kalida is a very acceptable uh, pronunciation, and it actually means deathless or immortal, which I thought was. <laughs> Super, it was just, I couldn't, I saw that and I was like, yes, how could I not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, On point. Yeah. Yes, we love a good name. So um, Kalita, as, as has been, um, I think, kind of hinted at, is she is an art dealer and has her own gallery in Hell's Kitchen. Um, but I don't know how much more can be said um, at this point. Yeah. Oh, I guess another thing that was... Nope, that's the next episode. I'm trying to think what I can reveal. Uh, it's obvious that I don't, my sire's not around still. I think in episode one, it's sort of like everyone goes around the table, like, oh, my sire. Well, and I'm just like, what? Y'all still talk to them? That's, yeah. that's why. Like, I don't know. And, you know, being new, you keep calling me new, which is very true. Uh, it's just that I, I am surprised by a lot of information. I think every episode that happens, I'm getting new information from different factions that it's totally, it's changing my opinion like every episode about what, I, I don't even know where my character's going at this point. I don't know where I'm, my loyalties are going to lie. It's, I'm, it's going to get weird. <laughs> it has been odd to play a character that's like really connected with their sire. Mm -hmm. So that's been very different just being like the spoiled little like I was still trying to figure out what that child. relationship is. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> a daddy's girl thing. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah. And it's, it's fun to kind of lean into that, especially if you're a Ventru, it's and have lots of resources and luxury. Mm. It is a very fun thing to be 
Um, and the little things you reveal, like I, at any little point, like you talking, like you know, you the way you text with your sire and stuff. <laughs> and for me as an actor, like this is why I love tabletop RPGs and I love actual plays because like we never talked about this stuff beforehand. I am learning this live on camera. My reactions are me and character and Michelle being like, What's going on, you yeah. know, and I, and it's it's so thrilling. I I just uh, I just love I just love uh, you know being able to gamify like acting in, in sort of this you know safe and controlled way. And it's it's been just every time. <laughs> well, in my head, <laughs> emoji emoji. What is happening? <laughs> well, because in my head, like like how would I describe what just happened? And I just thought like the immediate thing that came to my head was that gif of the dumpster on fire. Mm -hmm like floating down a flooded street. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, that's that's how the night went. <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. <laughs> Where did y'all see the night going? Or even even just the series this far? So we're two episodes in, but you know, you've clearly spent a lot of time with your characters and, and getting into it. So where did you see this experience going versus where it ended? Oh, well, it, it's a very general rule. Whenever things, the more you try to plan something, the more I just expect it to just crumble to pieces. Um, so, but there have been a couple of things that happened that I just did not ever see. I did not see the kidnapping Oop. coming <laughs> at all. I was like, okay, we're doing this. Um, but, you know, the fun thing about this game is that you never know what's going to happen. And I love people making bold choices in yeah. in the game yeah. because it you know forces you to like think on your toes and like okay well we're in this like the more chaotic something is for me the more i enjoy it mm -hmm. because it's it's more entertaining for me to see how like how you're going to get out of a conflict yeah. rather than like trying to be civil although i think you know. truly like because like in my in my my real life michelle's real life i'm quite a like a organized person that needs spreadsheets and flowcharts and I feel like Nora's a little we a little bit of the same spirit oh, that, yeah. that when we play a game it's sort of like what's gonna happen what's the worst that gonna happen you know and I say that a lot and I really should stop doing that because I've had a lot of PC deaths in my in my day but uh <laughs> I'm actually the same way I like to plan my life a lot and in role playing I'm like I don't know I shoot yeah, oh, yeah. chaos is great and I think what happened I didn't even know Michelle didn't even know like that I was gonna keep that I, there was a moment where I was like mm, I let her go we run and then when they came, when Jason asked me, I was like, yeah, I was going to keep her. <laughs> That's what was going to happen. Whenever you hear like, okay, don't be a murder hobo. I just it's want, immediately maybe I wanted a friend, you go you towards what. <laughs> maybe you just wanted a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Unclear. You know. That's how you make friends. You stab them mm -hmm. and then kidnap them. You make a, you make a memorable first impression. Oops. <laughs> um, so you guys are playing the Camarilla. This is the first time we've seen the Camarilla. Speaking of Michelle in real life and Nora in real life, in real life, would you all be on the Camarilla or the Anarchs? Cam, 100%. Oh, okay. If I ever had a Organized crime or disorganized crime? Is that the question? Yeah, <laughs> I, guess I like so, when yeah. crime's organized, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm a, I'm, I'm, in my personal life, I'm a little bit of an Anarch because I don't, you know, work traditional jobs. I'm freelance, I'm an actor, slash whatever, you know, and I, I think that's... Uh, it, my life is a little bit chaotic, but I like it though. It's con it's a little bit of controlled chaos though. Yeah. For me, when I think of vampire, it's always like the main thing that I love about it is like the drama of social climbing. Mm. And so, if you're if you're a social climber, what better what better uh, faction to be in than I'm the Cam? Social climber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gremlin all the day. Usually, <laughs> I, this is very rare for me to be all dressed up. But <laughs> well, thank you both so much for joining us here at the club. And thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you after Season 2, Episode 3 of New York by Night. Um, yeah, and this has been Club Auspects. Thank you. Is there any emotion we should do to say goodbye? We just, we just dance. Is there an outro? <laughs>